here at River Dance Farms. We've been certified organic from the moment we moved in. And now it's, it's like 73 acres. The crops that we're growing here are organic almond trees, walnuts, blueberries, cherries, and mixed gardens that are um, for you pickers and for kind of some educational things we do. I really like the idea of trying to, we call it enhance the landscape, to make it more attractive to natural predators. And enhancing the landscape involves, you know, putting up nest boxes in appropriate habitat. We tell farmers that American kestrels can be a tool in their toolkit to help manage pests. Kestrels are not going to take care of all your pest problems, but we did find results showing that the number of fruit-eating birds diminishes when you have active kestrels nesting in an orchard, a sweet cherry orchard, and they also eat many voles and a large number of insects. We just put up two kestrel boxes. One is here right next to us, which is fairly near both the cherries and the blueberries, which are the main crops we have to protect from birds. We do put up just like mylar ribbon right as the fruit ripens, and that works a little bit, but to have these kestrels, they'll all be on patrol here and keeping the birds nervous. We worked with some economists and they estimate if all sweet cherry growers in Michigan put up kestrel boxes and had the high occupancy that we did, then Michigan's GDP would be about $2 million higher over five years. And they also estimated that 46 to 50 jobs would be created if there were all these extra sweet cherries in the system. What they estimate is that for every dollar spent getting kestrels into orchards, like the time and the materials to put the boxes up, between 80 and $350 of cherries was saved. We make sure we have some good perching material for the hawks to look over the landscape during the day. So the hawks are on duty during the day and the owls, we have barn owl boxes too, they're on du duty in the, at night. We definitely have birds that go after the pest insect swallows, get the moss. There's also ones that get the grubs along with the seeds that they're grazing on the ground. We advise people to put boxes away from wood lots or away from wood lines to decrease the probability you'll get fruit eating starlings in there. The American kestrels have reduced reproductive success when they're on busy roads and their stress levels were higher. So, you know, you would not put your boxes on busy roads. Kestrels really like open habitat, perhaps with some scattered trees. So for example, a cherry orchard is nice habitat for them, particularly if it's next to a pasture. Boxes should be about a half mile apart at a minimum. The boxes should face towards the southeast and should be between 10 and 20 feet high. And you put a couple of inches of wood shavings in the bottom of it. So kestrels don't build their own nests. In nature, they rely on other cavity nesters to excavate the nest, but so we're providing the nest for them. So you put these wood shavings in there. We've actually retired at least seven or eight acres into habitat that, you know, could have just been farming and in most places. So we just feel like we're a refuge. There's also things that are really well suited to farm within this system. Besides this one hedgerow, this one's actually a wildlife corridor. We built a wildlife pond and expanded the riparian edge and put in more native plants, including milkweed, and definitely cover crop over the years. Anything we can do to add to the diversity, that's important to me, both the pest management and helping to feed the pollinators. When the kestrels have finished nesting, so sometime in the fall, is the best time to clean out the box. And that would mean you take a putty knife and a spade, put a mask on, and scrape out all the material that's been left in there, put it in a dumpster, and then put new wood shavings in, and then it would be ready for the springtime. Our colleagues on a couple of the projects found that many consumers are willing to pay more for fruit produced with these types of pest management techniques. To get started with bringing more biology and wildlife to your farm, besides boxes, the first thing you can do is find a good place for a hedgerow around a fence or someplace that you're not using right now. Another thing you can do is plant a cover crop in between tree rows or along some edges. The third one is if your home or office building is on the farm, you can landscape that with plants. 
And the fourth thing is NRCS, the Natural Resources Conservation Service. They can help you decide what would work best on your farm. They'll come do a conservation plan and they can also help fund that. I really enjoy helping to, in my small way, you know, help our food supply and help food production move along this path to greater sustainability. There's a lot of stuff that you can get help with to get going. So do things that are good for you and your farm in the long run and get some help to be a good steward for all the people around you. Mm -hmm.